Hi, this is Dr. Susan Saradrari from Dominion Fertility. Thanks for joining me here today. I just want to talk a little bit about a typical timeline for a stimulated IVF cycle. When patients decide to do IVF, this is the first question I usually get. What's the timeline? How does it work? When do I start medications? And so typically with an IVF cycle, we ask you to call on the first day of your period. And then we start our first set of medications, which are medications to help prepare your ovaries for the actual stimulation medication right after you ovulate it. So it doesn't start at the first few days of your period, but right after you ovulate it, usually around day 19 or 20 or so. So around day 19 or 20 is the first time you would come in. We would take a blood test, make sure you've ovulated, and then we would start um, the medication that prepares your ovaries. And usually, traditionally, there's about three medications that we use for that. It is either oral contraceptive pills, um, esterase, or um, Lupron. And it depends on, on the patient and what the situation is. And you would be taking um, those medications roughly for about seven to 12 days or so. Then you would stop them and most patients will get a, an, an other period at that point. And with that period, we will start the actual stimulation medication, which is also traditionally your um, folistim and your gonalef, one of those two, which um, contains FSH, and then usually an other medication called Menopure, um, which contains FSH and LH. And these two medications are the medications that stimulate your ovaries to make more than one egg. And so you would be taking those medications then, I would say uh, roughly about eight to 12 days is kind of the median. And during that time, you would come in for blood tests and ultrasounds, um, what we call monitoring to make sure your eggs are growing. Now, when your eggs are big enough and your hormone values are good, then we usually um, give you what's called a trigger shot. And this trigger shot can either be um, HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin, or uh, Lupron. And again, it depends on the type of patient um, what we give. Usually patients who have really good ovarian function, um, patients who are egg donors, or patients who, for example, have polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, those patients benefit from a Lupron trigger because um, they're at increased risk for ovarian hyperstimulation, and a Lupron trigger helps prevent that. So we make that decision based on, on the patient's characteristics. And then once the patient had the trigger shot, then anywhere from 34 to 36 hours later, depending on the practice, depending on the cycle and so forth, um, we actually retrieve the eggs. And then once the eggs retrieved on that particular day, um, if it's an egg freezing cycle, they obviously get frozen, or if it's a, a, a regular IVF cycle, the eggs get fertilized and then usually they grow in the dish for about five to six days um, and then they get actually the embryos get frozen. There's really good evidence that freezing the embryos after a stimulated IVF cycle um, and then transferring them in a frozen embryo transfer actually gives you um, higher success rates. And then just before you freeze them, patients also have the option of doing pre-implantation genetic testing um, where we can make sure the chromosomes of the embryo are normal which a lot of our patients do and which is highly recommended um, to increase your success rates. But that is usually the timeline for a stimulated IVF cycle. Thanks for joining me here today. I'm Dr. Susan Sarajari from Dominion Fertility. Dominion Fertility, making miracles happen, one family at a time.